Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, this is going to be about how to record video games with a simple screen recorder and uh, combine the microphone input that you're using with the game audio so that you have one nice file to then edit. Uh, first thing you're going to need obviously is a simple screen recorder. I'm not going to do a tutorial on that. Uh, we'll put all of this text and the information below the video. Uh, so there's the download and install link, uh, and then this second link is where a lot of information is for how to get the audio working, and it's where I derived much of this tutorial, tutorial but not all of it, uh, because I had to do some extra stuff. First thing you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to go to the terminal. You're going to want to do also mixer. Uh, you're going to want to, normally you're going to use your your built-in audio, and so I'll show you that real fast. Um, oops. F5 to show all of them. Uh, what you're going to want to do is look for your mic and make sure it's not muted. Uh, real quick, front mic here. If you press M, that mutes it. That's what double M means press it again, it unmutes. Uh, so zero means recording. I turn stuff up to just at the edge of green usually. Uh, since I am not using this though, uh, I'll show you what I have to do. Oh, I don't need the webcam one. Uh, this is what you'll need to make sure is on your USB headphone, and this is the problem I had. I broke my front mic mount. My rear mic mount just has a ton of noise because of the fans inducing noise in the mic. So I uh, got me a nice little USB dongle and uh, promptly found out I couldn't find it in Pulse Audio. So that's what these instructions mainly are for. Once you uh, make sure that your mic is not muted, uh, you go back here and uh, you can check in uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control and you can see simple screen recorder and you can see my voice bouncing up and down that means it's recording it. Uh, the way I know how to, the way I did that was um, you go to Pulse Audio's uh, commands and those commands you can find them online but the main one that I ended up needing after all the research was this and uh, then I just I suggest go ahead and put that into a text file so it's easy to search. Uh, but what this does is it gives you the sources that Pulse Audio uh, is looking at. And what you want to find is this, Ports, Analog Input Mic. Uh, and then it'll have a bunch of stuff after it. Um, and you'll be able to tell by it that that's your USB mic, right? Uh, Actually, no. Uh, you, will <laughs> you will be able to find out that it's your USB mic because as you look up, so these things come in long text walls and each entry has its own big giant group of information. And so when you find anything that says input mic, you want to scroll up to the very top of that particular entry and it'll have a name. And that's where you're going to find out that it is indeed your USB headphone or whatever. Um, so that is a key piece of information because you're going to need to set up these little files down here. Uh, these, again, here at Martin's site, he, he gave us most of this, but I could never get my USB mic to work. It's because I needed this last line here to specify, specify my headphone and uh, microphone jack. Uh, what you can do with these is you put them into a little bash script. So you see see what I have here? It's a little bash script. And then when you're in the uh, shell, you can see how I did it. You just run it, and those little numbers indicate that it in did indeed run. And then this indicates that it did indeed work. So once you have all of that set up, uh, you're going to want to start Simple Screen Recorder. Uh, I've already got it started, obviously, um, but I'm going to start a second instance of it. I'm not actually going to record with it, though. So, this says Minecraft. It's really my setup for my desktop. 
but to do games, you're going to want to do OpenGL. So you see, I hit Steam, and it automatically moves the radio button down here because I've saved it as a profile. So you may make a new profile, change your settings, save it, and it will show up in this drop-down list. My OpenGL settings are pretty bare. I even unchecked this because I felt as if I was getting better performance without it. Uh, I have 60 frames per second. My video games never run the full 60 <laughs> frames per second, but they'll bounce up and down between 20 and 40 or whatever. 60 is what YouTube takes, so that's what I put. Because we're using Pulse Audio, you're going to want to use Pulse Audio here. Uh, this can be any monitor for some reason. Uh, you'd think you'd want to make it monitor built-in audio or something, but it doesn't seem to matter. I guess because Simple Screen Recorder is up inside the NVIDIA anyway, uh, that's why that works. You continue on. This uh, works fine for me. Uh, some of the other containers don't have the codecs that I want, and this codec is recommended by YouTube. Uh, this setting on constant rate is also pretty well the standard average. Uh, I leave it there. Uh, I preset super fast because I felt like it. I probably shouldn't allow frame skipping, but I do. And then for audio codec, I let it be uncompressed, and I compress it after I've edited the movie. Um, I compress the audio through the editor. Uh, you'll see here, I have this little name here. Uh, if you would go ahead and continue, you see that it would overwrite a file that I don't want to write. But what you would do is you would end up on this screen. This little thing would be red dot, and you would hit record, and you would be recording. So, that's how that runs. Uh, show you real quick how to set the games up in Steam. Uh, this, this is a fun game. I've been, been kind of loving it. <laughs> Hopefully we will indeed hear the sound. Yes, it does appear as if we're using the sound. Um... What you need to know about this is these properties. Uh, I usually uncheck this. Uh, it can cause problems in some games, not necessarily always, but this is the important part. This little command right here has to be in the set launch commands or simple screen recorder will not be able to record the game. So that's really the only thing you know. You can do it with any game. Usually, well, not any game. Some of these games, uh, do not like <laughs> uh, simple screen recorders OpenGL, and he, he says OpenGL is still an alpha, but uh, it's working pretty good for me so far. So, yes, again, those settings are right-click, properties, set launch, launch options, and that. And as a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and put that in here so that it will be in the text under the video as well. Okay, now I already did this. Oh, yep, meant to show you that. Got to have this on for this to actually work. In Pulse Audio, to get the video game sound in playback, there's Shelter right there. See, these null outputs here were created by that bash script. Alright, on this front page, you want to check the bottom null output. And then on the recording one for Simple Screen Recorder, you want to choose the top one. Uh, what that does is it combines the mic and the game output into one null output, which the Simple Screen Recorder then records. The uh, reason why is because you told it to. <laughs> right there. Now we can turn this off. Hopefully you were able to hear that. Uh, problem I can't really show you without the game on because it disappears after the game's off. So, uh, quite important to do that or you will not get your combined sound. That's uh, So that's what this is about. Check and be sure the sound is recording. Uh, once you're done, you can stop the recording. I usually just hit save. That stops it and saves it all at once. Now comes the fun part. Go ahead and start Audacity. Uh, we'll use some, just some little examples here. Audacity may not want to work for me right this red-hot minute. 
has given me problems doing tutorials in the past, but we'll see. We'll see. You will have saved your video somewhere. I tend to save mine in various work folders. Uh, so here's Dying Light one. Here is the raw footage. Uh, we'll take this first one. You can actually just plop it right in here, usually. And it will eventually turn it all into a sound file. Okay, here it is. Uh, this is the sound uh, wave profile. Let's see if it's actually working. Playing at a normal speed, thank goodness. There we go. On this one you can hear hiss more than anything else. Uh, let's see if you can actually hear the hiss. Yeah, so I'll show you the one main trick I know here, and this is the whole reason I use Audacity. Uh, hear the hiss, hear the hiss, hear the hiss. So what do you do? You uh, stop it. You highlight this area right here. You'll see it's mostly quiet except for that hiss that you can hear. You do effect noise removal. You get a noise profile. Then you select the whole thing. Go back to that exact same effect, noise removal, and just so you can see what's actually going on, you hit OK. I usually click the edge of that button. <laughs> and uh, so here we go, noise removal. We'll fast forward through this as well. OK, and now, so if I go to that same little spot and play, dead silent, right? Oops, didn't move. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? I want this thing. Oh, good grief. There we go. What is that? Hopefully this is working. Uh, this is the way to do it. Yeah, so you see, dead silent. And yet there's still noise. Um, my USB mic has another problem in that I have a little light. Uh, it's not actually a USB mic. It's a regular analog mic with microphone and headphone jacks which I broke my microphone jack in the front of my computer. In the back of the computer, fans and everything induce so much noise that that microphone jack is almost worthless. So I bought a USB converter. The USB converter has a light on it that induces, you guessed it, noise in the jack. Uh, but it's pretty easy. It filters out exactly the same way hiss does. And then I'll show you a little trick. If you have any high-pitched noises that you want out of your uh, soundtracks, uh, you can go down here, and they're in alphabetical order. Low pass filter. I usually set this thing right around 8500. Uh, not 5800, but 8500. Anything below that frequency passes through. Thus, the low pass filter. I'm not going to do that to this. Uh, it's enough that you know how to do it, but I do it to the videos. I'll probably do it to this video because there's that little light over there just blinking away, making beepy noises in my sound as we speak. So uh, after you're done with this, you will export it. Uh, the one thing I will say about exporting it, I use this format because of the 16-bit PCM codec or whatever that is. It's a codec, it's a file type, whatever. 16-bit because a simple screen recorder records in 16-bit. I want it to match. In times past, I have had this come up where it creates a lack of synchronization between the video and the sound. So I do this specifically to make sure my video and my sound match. And I would suggest you do likewise if you're going to use simple screen recorder. Uh, so I'm not going to save, and I'm not going to save this either. Why? Because I've already saved this. I've already actually edited all of this. I'm not going to save before closing. I'm just going to move on. Sorry for the bad nose thing. Once you've got the sound cleaned, uh, I've been using KD in Live lately. It works better for me than OpenShot. OpenShot worked pretty good for a while, and then it started crashing on me when I had too many tracks. So, KD, you know, it always helps to be able to spell. KD in live. Works a lot like OpenShot. Uh, pretty much any 
<laughs> video editing software that you get. Uh, of course, this is free, and so is OpenShot. So this is the button you click to import stuff. I'm going to go ahead and import the uh, raw footage dying light one. And coincidence, uh, this is interesting. It says your clip does not match the project's profile. That's because this clip's average frame rate is about 14. It does get higher and lower. Uh, it looks really good in the video. I didn't realize the frame rate was so crappy on average. But, yeah, there it is. 12. It's 12. Uh, I uploaded to YouTube at 60 frames per second. Uh, and it looks really nice. I don't know why, uh, but it looks pretty good. Here lately, since Dying Light updated, I get better frame rates. Uh, but that's just a warning. It'll still go ahead and edit it for us. Then we will go back here. And I have this says raw sound. That's a lie. This is the cleaned sound. Uh, so show you how this works. I'm going to put the audio in audio one. I'm going to put the video in video one. What seems to be the issue here? Ah, there it is. It's loading. Okay. Now we will, like, set this here. You may not be able to hear this until I go fiddle with pulse audio volume control. What we're going to do right quick is we're going to change this to monitor of audio adapter. Built in, okay. Ready? And then I'm going to show you the way this should sound so that you'll know that you have synced your sound. Ready, set, go. Please let there be sound. Sound would be awesome. So there you have it. See how it's hollow sounding? That means the uh, audio tracks are very close to each other. And then what you're going to want to do is go close to the end. And, uh, yeah, let me get it to stop here. And then stop. Uh, so you'll be able to hear now that towards the end it's still synced. So we'll do this again. There we go. So no matter where you click in this video, the sound, you see the waveforms here, waveforms here, they match. Uh, once you make sure they match, you just go ahead and mute. Uh, the one for the video, and all you'll hear is the nice, clean audio that you cleaned of static and beeps and whatever else is going wrong with it. Uh, it's real fast. Um, editing in this thing goes like editing in almost any other piece of video editing software. Got to be kind of careful. Let the line bisect the scissors there. Uh, then you go back to the little pointer. You know, right click, delete section, right click, delete selection, scoot that up to the beginning, scoot this up to the beginning. You can right click and add transitions. Transitions only work on uh, video, so like if you had two clips, you had to overlap them. Uh, but I like to do effects, so like fade, I like to fade from black means go from black to the Warner Brothers symbol or whatever's going on. Fade to black, those two are for video, and then fade in and fade out work for audio. Uh, once you're done editing in KDN Live, you uh, create your video by using the render button. Uh, render project will be, I pick MP4, this H264 is YouTube recommended. Uh, file quality, I pick 18. Audio bitrate, I pick 192 normally. Uh, I'm not going to actually render this, though. In KDN Live, it's usually best at the top, down to the worst at the bottom. 
You'll notice there's absolutely nothing here that says anything about your progressive scan, 1080p, however many frames per second. That's because that's over here in your project settings. Uh, there it is right there. Uh, so if you need to change that, you'll have to change your project settings. You can probably change them per project. I don't know. But that's it. Once you're done, you can just upload your video to YouTube and have a spanking great day. Wanted to keep this short and sweet, and it's already close to 20 minutes. So uh, take care and bye bye. Happy YouTubing.